most people have seen the footage of you on, you know, 42nd Street, um, where you were talking about squaring up with Pac. Um, if you would, would you like to detail the exact events that played out in that situation? Me and Tupac never had a altercation. Never squared up or anything? Nah, we had a... He asked me about an issue about the record I shot you. And he just was asking, like, yo, his homeboy asked me. He Tupac didn't ask me, but then Tupac walked over after his homeboy asked me, what we talking about in the record? Nah, we're not talking about you. Shook hands, that was it. But the people on the video that shot it, we was at the Underground Hip Hop Awards. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying the fact that niggas ain't underground. Niggas don't know nothing about underground. You know what I'm saying? I was I was talking about the Tupac incident when we had that little face-to-face uh, -face confrontation. That's underground. You know what I'm saying? These underground dudes don't have confrontation nowadays. You know what I'm saying? You go, you talk, I see online, they talk about each other on Twitter or whatever. They beef and then they piece it out at the end. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the era where... You talk about me, we're going to see each other, and something's going to happen. It ain't no piecing out if you talking shit. You know what I'm saying? When I see you, we're going we're gonna to deal with it. It ain't no, you disrespect me in front of the whole world, and then you can say sorry, and I ain't going to smack you in your face when I see you. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I was speak, speaking about. But they put, Keith Murray said he fought Tupac. They lied to get hit in the media. You know what I'm saying? So... You and Pac, when you guys had the, the discussion, it was just a quick exchange of questions. It wasn't like heated in any type of way or what? No. No? No. The Def Jam situation, when you had you know the altercation with the employee. I remember I've also, in past interviews, seen mm -hmm. you say that you got a little bit too physical. If you could, uh, just break down the Yeah, that Def Jam situation. The whole thing Def Jam was like kind of like, you know... It was bugged out because people had the impression that I went to Def Jam in the office and had a physical altercation with a worker in the office. I would never go. That never happened. It was in Houston, Texas, when I had an altercation with the person whom I took under my wing, whom I you know, gave clothes to, let them sleep in my hotel room, and they was doing promotions. But they wasn't doing the right thing by me. And we was at a club, we was hanging out, and we got into an altercation. They brought it back to New York, Human Resources, and said that I beat them up. And I did grab one nigga by the neck, but it was in Texas. He went in a neck brace like, yo, he hurt me. I never even shook the nigga hard enough. He lied, you know what I'm saying? So he went there and got money from them. It made it seem like that. And then I had a talk with Leo... Yeah, I did choke the nigga. Yeah, I did stomp the nigga out. The Leo was like, well, you know, this and that. We can't have that here, Keith. And then that fizzled out. And then Leo and Kevin left. I didn't know they was leaving. So I guess Human Resources was like, yo, you brought him in. Take him out with you. You know what I'm saying? But I never went in Def Jam. I would never go to no office and go crazy in nobody's office. That would never be Keith Nury. Never has been. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad you asked me that question to clear that up. Nobody's really asked me that question like that. And I'm glad because I want to make it known. Keith Murray's not a bad investment and I'm not a hothead. I won't do no crazy shit like that. Mm -hmm. But I was friends with the nigga and we got into it. And he took a personal issue back to the company. And, and behind my back did some sneaky shit and lied and made it seem like it was business or You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that. The people just thought I went crazy and fucked the niggas up. And I, that never was the case at all. And them niggas know they did some foul shit and got my situation fucked up. But I kept it moving. I, I don't cry over spoiled milk. Mm -hmm. I just hustle and do my thing because that's how I've always been. And, I, you know, I'm Keith Murray. So whatever I decide to do, how I decide to get my business together, that's on me. Mm -hmm. I don't need nobody to cut me a check for me to go get unaccountable amounts of monetary. Right. Fortunately, by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Do you regret getting into that altercation in the first place? No, I don't, but I regret leaving Jive going to Def Jam. 
I was smooth at job. When I was incarcerated, I went to a halfway house. I did like 26 months, went to a halfway house. Leo and Kevin came to me. I was dissatisfied with job because I felt that my popularity, my record sales wasn't matching my popularity. I was going gold, niggas was going platinum. And I was like, wait a minute, I want to get off job. You know what I'm saying? Let me try my hand somewhere else. Leo and Kevin came, $2 million. It seemed like a good thing to do. I was going to Def Jam, the, the Def Jam. But when I went to Def Jam, it was the corporation, not the Def Jam I know. Mm -hmm. Leo and Kevin took me, handed me off to their people. It was a whole nother thing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't hands-on what I thought it was going to be. I felt I should have stayed at Jive and just finished my options out over there. But fortunately, Jive and Def Jam promoted Keith Murray. I had some good singles off that Def Jam album, and it made me who I am, and the whole world knows me. Mm -hmm. So now I, God has given me the opportunity to just say, figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you good money, so figure it out. Mm -hmm.